Good morning, viewers, from wherever you're watching us from. It's always good to be back in this platform. And we apologize for starting off late. We had some technical issues here. And wherever you're watching us, it's always good to be back. And today, tomorrow is World Gamo Day. Indeed. We're wishing everybody happy Gamo. Is there as such a thing as World Gamo Day? Yes, is yes, there? Yes, yes. Oh, yeah. okay. I'd never Literally. heard the phrase till I came to the Gambia. Literally, Ever. like almost all the countries in the sub-region. But they don't all call it Gamo, do they? Gamo, yeah. I have only heard that since I came to the Gambia. Gambia, Senegal yeah. and other countries. Yeah, okay. Like Good you guys, yeah. you have Tobaski, Korite and so on. So on only, yeah. only in this sub-region do they call yes. it that. <laughs> okay. And my... <laughs> Co-host is Mr. Ade Drame. I don't have to introduce him. I've because introduced he's myself already. You guys already know that he's Mr. Ade Drame. <laughs> good morning, Mr. Ade. Uh, uh, good morning. It's a pleasure. And again, also, I apologize for the late start. But as you said, sometimes these things happen. Technology can do that to you. Mm. But uh, it will not deter us. We will go on. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, on the program itinerary this morning, um, like always, we will start off with our African proverb, and it's an interesting one, Mr. Adi. It I certainly I'm, is. I'm going to struggle today. Oh, really? Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> I so, thought it was an easy one, but carry on. Yeah. Okay. And the newspaper review, and our newspaper review guest is Mr. Malika. We were expecting him later. And our on the segments also, we are expecting Mad Nyang, Executive Director of Gambia Participates, to talk to us about the recently held dialogue on you know, vertical and horizontal accountability. Sure. And stakeholders were invited to really talk to us about the things that they've been doing to fight corruption mm -hmm. in the country over the years. And we're expecting K. Mojanka, Principal Trade Economist, and recently at the Ministry of Trade handed over equipment to the sheet trade hub members mm. and you know meant to boost their businesses and mm. support them as far as business is concerned mm -hmm. so these and other things will be, you know we rolling in this morning show it's yes. going to be an interesting segment it, despite it, the fact it, that we started up late well i was going to say we might have to drop one uh, segment uh, possibly the newspaper review yeah. uh, but uh it's either that or the, or the African proverb, which you said you, you thought might be difficult. It's not. Let me read it. Uh, it says, when something is important enough, you do it even if the odds are not in your favor. And uh, it says it's from South Africa. Uh, so when something is important enough, you do it even if the odds are not in your favor, uh, South Africa. Um, uh, for me, uh, the reason I said it's not is that um, it's about determination. Um, I think if you, if you kind of stand back and think about it, there must have been many times when people have told you, don't do this yeah. um, because it's not good for you, because you won't be able to accomplish it. But in fact, the fact that they've told you that is probably the thing that will drive you on even more. Okay. Like you want to show people that, oh yeah, you think I can't do this? Well, just watch me. And then you go and you do it. So yeah. even if the, the odds are against you in terms of, oh, you know, this is really difficult. Mm -hmm. Nobody's done it before. You think... Well, actually, somebody has to do it for the first time. Maybe I might be that person. And, and then you, you, you set out to do it. And, and as I said, sometimes mm -hmm. people's negativity actually tends out to be the kind of thing that you take as the energy to give you your own positivity to say, you know what, you think I can't do this? Just watch me. That's and right. so, yeah, so, you know, yeah, so if it's important enough, mm -hmm. You think yeah, nothing's going Don't to stop me. Absolutely. I'm going to do this. Yeah, so I think we've all been in that in, in different situations in school, in the home, <laughs> even in, 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 in the workplace. You know. So yeah, I, you know, for me that's I think that's 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 how I read it. And and you know, it's mm -hmm. it's we say African yeah. proverb. It's more of a quote than course, anything yeah, else. But yeah, true. yeah. So yeah. So go. now that I've kind of opened the door. Now you lead the way. <laughs> Perhaps you might Jesus want to. Jesus says we lead and others follow. We innovate, others follow. So yeah, you innovate and now I'm in the way. <laughs> so yeah, yeah um, there is always a first time, like you said. Um, you know, if something is very important to you, no matter how hard it is or difficult it is, you tend to forgo all the difficulties and then you focus on the main thing, which yeah. is the main goal. And I think that is very important. Every day we get up and then we have to we are options strike a balance between you know what is so important what sure. is less important and what we should prioritize mm -hmm. as human beings so at the end of the day you tend to um 
go with the one you think is the most important and yeah. you know this goes to show that if you're doing something be committed to it it's mm -hmm. not easy mm -hmm. good things don't come easy and you know if you want something let nothing stop you i mean all these innovations that we're seeing in the world 30 40 years ago mm -hmm. no one thought of that these innovations will, will happen. No, but now someone that. started it. There is always a first time. Always a and first. those are the people who probably, you know, millions will go against and say, okay, this is not possible. Or maybe you are insane. Mm -mm. Most of the scientists, some of them are called, you know, they are insane, really. Yeah, you I know, mean, they are thinking something that is unimaginable. Yeah. And I think, yeah, there is always a first time. And if you want to make a mark, if you want to change the world, if mm. you want to change the narrative, mm -hmm. if you want to be unique, um, you really have to do things that ev not everybody else is doing. Yeah, it's like the, uh, I was reading a story on the BBC uh, a couple of weeks ago, and it was about the first woman to run the Boston Marathon. Uh, they had said that women couldn't do it, and, and so she had to go disguise as a man. And this, for me, sums it up. When something is important enough, mm. you do it, even if the odds are not in your favor. Mm. So the authorities had banned women from running, mm. so she joined the race, and about midway through the race, people realized that's a woman mm. running. And she said, you know, suddenly the crowds were coming and they were cheering and, and, and supporting her. Even some of the male runners, several of whom she beat, by the way, um, they were cheering her on, saying, yeah, go on, you can do it. And she did it. And, and you know, so that was definitely a case of the odds are, were against her, mm. uh, both in terms of, you know, the sexism and the authorities. Mm. They just said, you know, women can't do this, they'll die. Mm. Now, we just saw uh, a woman... woman smash the marathon record over this weekend that just gone by mm. and when you look at it mm. the women's um, marathon record is only 10 minutes behind the men's world record wow. so in about 10 or 15 years time i can see women and men running the same time for the marathon mm -hmm. and that's astonishing when as i said you know just in the 1960s mm. they were saying oh if women run the marathon they'll die mm. so yeah forget the odds you say and and that she was one person she said you know what i'm going to do it regardless of what people say so you know perfect example yeah, yeah. yeah you're Great right um, I mean this is a clear example of what a man can do a woman can do better well I don't know about better but you know <laughs> but a woman can do you know like yeah. men can run faster than women and still men are faster than women in the marathon they can do it equally I mean let, let's put it like that I mean women you can't say women can't run the marathon because they've shown that they can and, and they can run, you know, but at the moment they're not doing it better than men. So that doesn't work, <laughs> <laughs> you know, at the moment. Okay, it, it, yeah, it doesn't at work. At the moment, but it in doesn't the future, work. yeah, I'm optimistic you never know. that you they never know. really you never know. do better, yeah. yeah. So uh, with that, that was uh, African Proverb this morning yeah, and cool. we will go for a short commercial break. When we return, the program continues with the newspaper review and with our newspaper review guest Malika and we'll be right back. Future is now with QSAL's 5G network. Experience speeds like never before with our new 5G rocket fixed internet plan. Get speeds from 10 Mbps to 100 Mbps. Your 5G enabled devices. Walk into QSAL headquarters to get one of our 5G routers and experience the true feeling of 5G only with QSAL. QSAL brings you the future. Tech innovation. Incredible speed. The future is now. For more information, call our customer care on 111. QSAL, Sunyabus. We innovate, others follow. Terms and conditions apply. QSAL brings you the future with our ultimate bundles. Enjoy the best voice and data bundle plans in one package. Get unlimited data packages with flexible validity and enjoy what true internet feels like. Get 30 minutes of on-net and off-net calls with 5 gigabytes of data for just $350. Or get bigger bundle packages from 10 gigabytes to 20 gigabytes with over 100 on-net and off-net voice calls and enjoy the fastest internet speed in the Gambia. You can also buy one day, three day or even seven day packages and enjoy unlimited data bundles with uncapped speeds. Just dial star 343 hash today and experience the limitless capabilities of the QSO network. Star 343 hash should be your favorite code to dial now. For more information, call our customer care on 111. QSEL. We innovate, others follow. Step into the Espas Motors showroom for your luxurious name brand vehicle. Located along the Bertil Harding Highway, Espas Motors is the Gambia's authorized dealer for Chevy, Kia, Ford. And now we bring you the new Peugeot Model 3008 SUV. 
18-inch alloy wheels, 216 inches high ground clearance, keyless entry system, start and stop button, rear parking assistance system, reverse camera, adaptive cruise control with speed limit, LED daytime running lights, front and side airbags, 8-inch HD touchscreen. Not to forget our exquisite Peugeot Landtrek double cabin pickup with 2.1 liter diesel engine, 6-speed manual transmission 4x4, hill descent control, LED daytime running lights, Espace Motors, the authorized dealer for Peugeot. Visit us today or call us on 35-22-22. If you're just joining in, this is your This Morning program coming to you live on QTV and I am Jul Denjai. My co-host is Ade Drami and my newspaper guest is uh, Malika. Our MD. Our MD. Yes. Good morning, Mr. Ka. Uh, good morning. Thank you for having me. Uh, he's becoming a, fa a regular face yes. now. Yeah. 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 Becoming funny because now. because <laughs> he needs no introduction. We should, we should give him an award. <laughs> <laughs> Brownie points. Uh, but, but you know, many yeah. times we've said we're, we're going to discuss newspapers and then we come and the newspapers are not here. But mm. nonetheless, there are obviously lots and lots of things happening Absolutely. and we were saying this uh, in the break. So Malik, if I can, uh, we were talking about state-owned enterprises. There's now a commission which will oversee the running of them. So it's not a commission of inquiry. Mm. It's actually a commission that will oversee the governance and that commission has been given quite <coughs> uh, extensive powers. It's been constituted already. Uh, but what are you looking forward to from such a commission? Yeah, well, I think we kudos <coughs> to the government for setting up such a commission because we know that most of these state-owned enterprises are underperforming. Mm -hmm. Some of them are abysmally failed, actually, to the extent that you know we are subsidizing them, and that's not Heavily. very healthy. Yeah. You cannot run an <coughs> institution that is consuming all the resources that you are making. It's not good. In any normal you know, market economy they would definitely dispose of those so i don't know what the commission is going to find mm -hmm. but i think it's important they look at them individually and look at the the, the 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 areas in which they are underperforming and the reasons as to why and the recommendations that should come with regard to them yeah, because I we have many of them how sure. many about? there there are many really yes. state owned enterprises yes. and yes, all that but there's, uh, there's most of them are really done. owing a lot of money yeah i mean i think we need to um, just manage expectations mm. uh, because when it was announced as a commission people thought it was a commission of inquiry mm. it's not a commission of inquiry it's a commission of governance that will actually oversee the running of these and they've been given the powers to investigate to if people need to be investigated and prosecuted, uh, they will be investigated and prosecuted. So it's not a commission of inquiry similar to the one where people are being called. This is actually about the running of them, mm. about the governance of them. And, and that's what um, this commission will, and it's a permanent commission. commission. So it's not like a commission of inquiry which has a, a span yeah. and then it, 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 it finishes its inquiry stops. This one will actually oversee how they are run and the powers is being given mm -hmm. include them calling the people who run these things to say, why are you running it this way? Why has it failed? Um, you know, and, and they will have similar uh, questions that they will ask to a commission of inquiry, but they are not a commission of inquiry. I think we need to just I, manage I guess that. they can even influence the selection of uh, the board as well. well I know well, the board course. usually <coughs> have to be appointed, the chairman particularly, yeah. by the president for so is what I think within their remit also they would be looking into those things. I, I know it's headed by Usain Nungam who is very experienced mm -hmm. and individual so they will definitely I think it's time that we look at governance generally in all uh, state institutions. Mm -hmm. It doesn't do any harm to look how to improve things and make it more efficient so that you know it can impact in the development of, of the country where you have uh, a state-owned enterprise failing, then it becomes a burden on the state and the people as well, especially on the public post, okay. because it means you have to collect revenue that should have gone somewhere, rather than you know going there, we subsidize it to maintain something that is not performing. When it happened in the UK, I remember in the 80s, say, Margaret yeah. Thatcher yeah. was bold enough to liquidate and sell a lot of them. I know it's, it's usually a controversy, you know, when Margaret, you... Margaret Thatcher is in the next level, Mr. Kerr. 
if they really want to do that here, I mean, it's, it's going no, to no, be No, no, I, I can future. well see it that some of the recommendations that the Commission will make will be that these should be sold to the private sector. Uh, to Which make has been the recommendation for far too long. Yeah, you know, yeah. for them to be, but well, we've never had a Commission constituted uh, mm -hmm. to oversee the governance of them. So it, they could make that recommendation that this one, this one, whatever, should be sold off. Uh, to the private sector and be run as a private, in, in, you know, f so that it can, it can mm. be profitable. Mm. And, yeah. and it, once it's run privately, then we, the public, our taxes are not funding it or propping it up. Mm. It has to sink or swim. Mm. So, you yeah, know. We uh, don't want to preempt yeah. their findings or yeah. recommendations, yeah. but yeah. nonetheless, you know, giving an opinion. They have uh, that based, option. Yeah, based on, sure. on the fact mm. of mm. other countries' experience in terms of on the performance of lack or lack of efficiency of some mm -hmm. state-owned enterprises. Those were the kind of prescriptions that were, you know, implemented. Mm -hmm. So, but they will look at it and then come up yeah. and then based yeah, on that. Just so that um, it will be effective and then the recommendations will be adhered to. Mm -hmm. Because oftentimes that is the problem in this country. Implementation, we have very good initiative. We set up very good commissions and set up very good things. But at the end of the day, um, you know, we don't conclusively uh, evidently bring out these to the people to show that okay this is what is really happening these are our findings and these are the recommendation and it is going to be implemented i think that is really a problem but this particular one if they really implemented these to the latter i think that the state-owned enterprises will do so well and i think they need to do well really yeah, some of them I mean, they may not necessarily be sold they no, can no, also yeah. they just uh, tighten up the government or, 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 just change the mode of them them like yeah. now yeah. people have been saying the water division electricity division is massive yeah, quite. There are other areas like the ferries, they can also uh, decouple it from, from Ports Authority administration. Mm -hmm. There is a lot of issues that they can look into in terms of recommendation, mm -hmm. but we have to wait. I and mean, see. What, where I would not exactly take issue, but um, mm -hmm. we've had the likes of the Janet Commission. Mm -hmm. It sat, uh, you know, properties were seized and sold. Uh, we had the TRRC, it reported, and yes, some of the uh, recommendations but I said this all along mm. that you know even though people were getting excited when government issued its white paper saying we accept all these it doesn't mean that just like that yeah. everything can be implemented the because process, some of yeah. them there's a cost uh, element there's mm -hmm. things you have to put in place systems and, and, and procedures to make sure some of these things can be delivered and of course there's the impatience that you know we want it done now we want it done today uh, so it's not always going to be the case but I get your point that you know, you know our shelves in the Gambia are groaning under the weight of laws and protocols that we've passed that have never been implemented mm. properly, uh, even though they've been <laughs> validated at workshops and seminars and conferences. So there is that danger, and that's something I think to be avoided for sure. And just to move on from this point, or mm -hmm. any if, uh, unless if you have anything to add on to that. No, I hope we will be able to have e the chairman, you know, to come on to one of our platforms yeah. to elaborate so, so that yeah. you know, the public exactly. can be aware. Yeah, the, I think the that's important. Yeah. So recently, um, we have the United Nations General Assembly and what African leaders were really making a stance this time around. And I really love their debate uh, because they were focusing on pertinent issues like um, the impact of climate change in the continent and for the fact that Africa is contributing very little to global warming, climate change, and, and all of that. The most. And the coup d'etats, <laughs> um, you know, the impact of COVID-19 and the Russia-Ukraine war to the African economies, and for the fact that the cake, global cake, need to be distributed evenly. And I mm -hmm. think I, I like that for the fact that African countries are really standing up for themselves. And they now know that, OK, really, uh, the resources is ours. It's coming from the African continent. But why is it that we are not having an equal share as far as the distribution is concerned? I mean, we, we have ourselves to blame on that point. But Malik might want to come in they, first. Yeah, yeah, they were making some noise. <laughs> <laughs> they, they always do, do, every year. I think for me, at the UN General Assembly, the hunger is usually just a talking point where mm. every year they just go and, you know, speak their minds, their hearts out, you know, say, you know, take postures and all this bravado. But like we are saying in terms of implementation, mm -hmm. it's the same thing at that level. Yeah. No that, implementation yeah. of all these things. They even it's sad that you leave all the all time and then you go to the US, you address the assembly, mm -hmm. maybe five people are just in the hall listening yeah, to you. Mm -hmm. Just going about, you know, saying all these things, you know, 
arguing about things, you know, that concerns you primarily. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they try to defend even the indefensible. Like people are celebrating the Guinean guy. I find yeah, his speech. Yeah. I heard you said mm -hmm. yesterday a lot of things was disingenuous for me. Yeah, mm -hmm. You know, and I think it's about time we hold to account all these leaders mm -hmm. and that is happening in Europe. Mm -hmm. The environmental movement is challenging them. Some of them are even taking them to court mm -hmm. to make sure that a they, court implement, case today. Mm -hmm. they, they implement yeah, some yeah. of these things. Mm -hmm. We just go to these places, pass resolutions and then come back and, and nothing it. happens. But <coughs> well, what they must recognize is that global em environmental issue mm -hmm. is not a national issue because it transcends boundaries. Yeah. It transcends geographical entities. Mm. It transcends everything. If the West do not uh, ensure that the African countries or the other third world countries are taking on board this, mm. the impact also is affecting them. More and there African are tycho countries. typhoons and all these, you know, tsunamis and all these mm. things. It doesn't discriminate. Mm. All these fires or temperature rise, it doesn't discriminate. Yeah. So we are in it together. Mm. So the 100 billion that is committed annually, they must have to get that, not just pledge it and leave it there. Mm. They must have to implement and look at how they transform energy. You know, uh, yeah, sure we thing. migrate from fossil fuels mm. to, you know, solar energy and all these things. We are in it together. So the solution. Yeah. I mean, when, when you're as old as I am, you've seen many. UN General Assemblies, I've even attended mm -hmm. a couple. <laughs> um, and we're good at speaking, uh, we're good at talking. Uh, and you were saying in another context about the Gambia, mm -hmm. that we say these things, we pass these resolutions, but we don't do anything. As ever, Mia Motley of um, Barbados gave one of the best speeches. Um, and again, she held these um, so-called developed countries to task. She took them to task, rather saying that, you know, last year mm. you all pledged all this money. You haven't even given 1% of what you pledged. She said, my island is in danger <laughs> mm -hmm. of one day being consumed uh, by the oceans. And, and so for us, it's an existential threat. Mm. So, you know, not, I don't just come here to talk. She said, when I go back, you know, mm. she said, even before I left, you know, my citizens were telling me, oh, why are you going there? It's just a talking shop. Mm. And really, I mean, for all Dumbuya said, for all the Burkina Faso, uh, representative said um, they made great speeches which have gone viral uh, you know they went there and they even justified why they staged a coup d'etat saying it's not a coup d'etat it's a revolution nonsense it's a coup d'etat <laughs> you know um, so you know uh, y you get that and you make all these so I don't get mm. swept along by these speeches I, I admire the brilliance of the speech but your, your, your actions will, will mm. tell uh, we've heard you know elections being postponed mm. in Mali because uh, of technical issues. Okay. Uh, and then you end up prolonging. And if you saw Dumbuya when he went back to Guinea, mm. the crowds that greeted him at the airport, that guy's not going to want to give up the presidency. Mm. He's going to stay. Yeah, uh, so, you know, the, the talk is fine. Mm. It's, it's impressive, but I, I, I'm beyond being impressed is always by that. A problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. for me, I think the Security Council or the, the General Assembly, it's not taking African leaders seriously. Um, because some of them are even saying that Security Council is not doing its responsibility as it should. Marquis Sal said that. Yes, really. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and I think that is true. It's the most undemocratic institution <laughs> anyway. There yeah, are people who, can, who have a veto. Yeah, yeah, so. <laughs> so when they want to take action, they can veto something. But Marquis Sal yeah. said, he said to my disappointment, even when... Africa had a kind of semi-permanent presence on it mm. and we wanted the Security Council to act on African matters. They, they, didn't, they never they, acted they, they upon didn't act it. And they, yeah. they didn't care. Yeah. And so, he, you know, that was, again, it was a good speech that he made. But, mm -hmm. you know, I don't think it's going to change them. I don't think the Security Council is going no, it, to start it's taking not. African because matters Because we have not put our house in order. Africa needs to put its uh, house in order if you really want to be taken seriously. Because this, you know, these developed countries know that they just come and talk. But even at their own home level, they're not doing enough. I mean, it's, it's one of the, I think it was Dumbuya who said something about, you know, 
uh, we should move away. We, we, we depend too much on um, Western democracy. And I thought, hang on a minute, we have nine presidents who've been in power for more than 30 years. Yes. Which Western democracy has a president who's been in power for 30 years? Yeah. It's a nonsense. It's they no go there and they make these the bombastic that democracy statements. Is, is, you know, a Western kind it's, of thing. It's, it's, it's foolish. I don't, I don't <laughs> understand it because yeah. one person, one vote is the best system you can determine, mm -hmm. use to determine, you know, representation. Yeah. And that is essentially what yeah. If I don't like you, I vote you out. Yeah. yeah. Thank Give you. me the choice. Thank <laughs> you, gentlemen. Uh, it mm. was a fruitful discussion. Indeed. Malika, I think we will now take a leave of you. Thank you very much for your contributions to this morning program. We will now take a short break. When we return, the program continues. And we are having Man Yang, Executive Director of Gambia Participates, to talk to us about the horizontal and vertical dialogue that they had recently with stakeholders. We'll be right back. Do your banking the smart way with the new Aji Bank mobile app. Transfer money to any bank account in the Gambia. Top up airtime for all networks. Pay utility bills. Check your account balance and view mini statements. Request for ATM cards. Request for checkbooks and more in a single touch. So, do your banking in a smart way. Do your banking now with Aji Bank mobile app. Every time is banking time. Aji Bank, your investment partner. You ask for it and QCell is giving it to you with our new and improved Sunyu Bundle Mega Promo. Now you can get more data at cheaper prices. Buy any of our bundle packages and enjoy massive discounts. Dial Star 303 has and enjoy browsing on the network with the biggest coverage. Buy a 20 megabytes data bundle for as low as 7 dollars and 50 bottles today or purchase bigger bundles up to 20 gigabytes. Yes, that's right, 20 gigabytes of data at your fingertips. With our mega promo bundles, you can browse more, chat longer and stay connected on the go anytime, anywhere. For more information, call our customer care on 111. QSell. We innovate. Orders follow. Terms and Welcome back. This is uh, this morning program, and I am with Ade Drame. And uh, we have Marnyang here, the executive director of Gambia Participates, uh, to talk to us about the recently uh, concluded dialogue on the horizontal and vertical accountability in tackling corruption in the Gambia. And it was an interesting one, I must say. Good morning, Mr. Nyang, and welcome to the program. Morning, Jude. Morning, Ade. It's a pleasure to have you here. Yeah. Likewise. Mm -hmm. And if we could dive in straight away, uh, we've got time constraints because we started late. But um, uh, what prompted uh, Gambia participates to actually uh, bring together all these people? And it's quite an impressive gathering that you had there. But what prompted you to actually uh, start that dialogue? Yeah, I think uh, we, we had to diagnose um, the, the efforts in terms of horizontal accountability. Um, at the government level, how government oversight institutions have been holding government officials and institutions accountable. Mm -hmm. We've not been having that kind of conversation, and then it seems like most of these independent institutions, they've mm -hmm. been doing their work, no communication. So that's mm -hmm. why we have to bring in the police, yeah. the office of the IGP, and the Minister of Justice, and ask them about the pending corruption cases yeah. and the level at which they are. So we had someone from the IGP's office and they said they actually did their investigation. So there were a list of investigated <laughs> cases like the... <laughs> they never communicated yeah. to the public. The, the, the yeah. scandal yeah. at the yeah. central bank, yeah. the yeah. Gump yeah. petroleum yeah. Uh, multi-million dollar scandal. Yeah. Um, and all, all what not, and the cases that are also actually trialed and then also withdrawn by the Ministry of Justice. Yeah. So. Um, and to be specific, that is the gun petroleum case. Yeah, yeah. And we have to ask them to communicate to mm. the citizens mm -hmm. what they have been doing in terms sure. of these corruption cases because there are surveys that actually make people feel like the government is not doing much in yeah, terms sure, of sure. trying corruption cases. So the office of the IGP said they do investigate, mm -hmm. but after they investigate, they file their reports to 
the Minister of Justice, mm -hmm. and the Minister of Justice decides, they will advise what type of steps will be taken. Yeah. And we had the Minister of Justice also there, they also did talk about the challenges that they go through. Mm -hmm. And the IGP office also said the number of cases that are taken to the Minister of Justice, sure. it took one person, it will actually take one person to look at the cases. Mm -hmm. And as a result, it's actually going to cause delay. So um, we feel like also there are some efforts that have been made by the government mm -hmm. in terms of combating corruption cases, but the communication was not forthcoming. Yeah, right. So some of the things that we were telling them is, in terms of horizontal accountability, why not the police start Police and Ministry of Justice start coordinating to have a database sort of or sort of information to tell the public, okay, this is the case corruption cases that we have investigated, and this are where they, this is where they are. Mm -hmm. So the public get to know um, the level at which these cases are. Yeah. So we also did talk about the vertical accountability mm -hmm. part, mm -hmm. uh, how government becomes accountable to the people, sure. right? Um, and this is where we also had the parliamentarians. Mm -hmm. You know what is going on with the anti-corruption bill? Yeah, um, yeah. They've been it's been uh, kicked. <laughs> it's, it's been around since 2019. Yeah, and, and it's been shuff shuffled forward. Yeah, they've been yeah. doing. Yeah. A lot, I call them the dentists that have been taken off this tip from the anti corruption yeah. bill. I mean, honestly speaking, what I could not fathom is mm. the ruling party mm. came up with a progressive anti corruption bill, mm -hmm. though it's not perfect. Mm -hmm. And the FPAC at the yeah. National yeah, Assembly yeah. made recommendations to actually strengthen that particular yeah. bill. Yeah. And you have people from the NPP ruling party. Mm. Well, compromising the strength yeah. of that bill well, and this yeah. is what yeah. I cannot understand yeah. so this is where the NPP also got to know that some of these parliamentarians they are there for themselves because oh. who on earth actually um, recommend for illicit enrichment to be deleted well this is it yeah. in so the 37 bill. really yeah, yeah, for me yeah. I think uh, they exactly. are rendering I mean, this bill useless because we keep saying that we want to fight corruption but then you have a bill that's been around since 2019 mm -hmm. that's four years we're coming up to and, and we still can't get it passed. So how serious are we? Yeah. And when you see some of the things that they're fiddling with and tinkering with, you think, well, you know, you could have done that in committee stage or whatever. Mm -hmm. This bill should have raced yeah, through, yeah. you know, if uh, we were serious. Yeah. yeah, no, definitely. And I mean, you know, I, I keep this having this conversation with my folks, right? If you talk about an anti-corruption commission, mm. you give them the power to investigate and prosecute. prosecute. Yep. Right now, you were telling them, "Oh, you cannot, you cannot investigate illicit <laughs> enrichment." <laughs> so, um, what is an anti-corruption commission without illicit? I mean, covering issues of illicit enrichment because yeah, look at the term force. Yeah, yeah, illicit, illicit enrichment. <laughs> exactly. That's a wealth uh, or something that you have possessed illicitly. Yeah, quite. So, why wouldn't an anti-corruption commission do that? Yeah, so that's why exactly. we talk about this vertical accountability. Yeah. Let the people know mm -hmm. the ones that have been because those elec those elected officials in parliament that mm -hmm. are making those proposals, mm -hmm. the citizens need to know that these are the individuals yeah. that come up with this proposal sure. to weaken the anti-corruption bill. And then you also have some in members or a member mm -hmm. that also proposed to mm -hmm. prevent the anti-corruption commission from investigating mm -hmm. prior corruption cases yeah, yeah, before its yeah. establishment. Yeah. Quite. Yeah. Which, is, which is remarkable. And I mean, if we, but, but for me, when I heard all of this and I thought, mm -hmm. is it that we have a kind of structural problem here in the Gambia where never mind corruption, <coughs> just giving information from government to citizen or to the media becomes a problem. I won't mention one of the ministries that we're struggling with over the last couple of days to get information that should be in the public domain. Um, if, uh, I'm tempted, but I won't. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, because uh, really, uh, they seem to want to hold on to stuff that's it's not even particularly yep. damaging or whatever. Yeah. It's just information that should be out there. We have a, you know, access yep. to information bill. Okay, you haven't set up the thing, but the bill is there. It's, it's been passed. Now it's law. now an act. Yeah. <laughs> it's an act. So, so it's not even a bill anymore. It's an act. So, so theoretically, we could make a request under the act and say, can we have this information? It is a law. But why should we need to get to that? You should be proactive. There's a statistics that you should be sure, putting out there, and yet you don't. Like you said, mm -hmm. you know, you go to England, you have serious fraud office, mm -hmm. you go on their website, every case that yep. they've investigated for yep. the last 40 years, yeah, you can true. access, and the ones that are still pending, you can uh, yeah. see what stage they're at. That's what we should really, be doing. For me, I think um, it, they, they should not really wait for journalists to ask for this information. Yeah. Once the police conducted their investigation, they should make it too public for people to know what they're doing. Yeah. But since 2017, how many cases were investigated? investigated and how many which of is them, which is what, what came up at, the, really? at, at this engagement yeah. yeah came up at the yeah. engagement you and know. the police also actually mentioned mm -hmm. it, right they said they have done a lot of investigation mm -hmm. and they've actually sent those files to the minister of justice mm -hmm. but 
I, the question that I was asking this um, gentleman from the fraud squad was, okay, mm. but is this communicator, he said, we, the PRO is the relevant person to ask, <laughs> which is fine. But what the recommendation that actually came out of it was, if you have done all this beautiful work investigating this, um, you know, corrupt cases, mm. put it on your website, mm. right? Absolutely. The National Assembly started doing it, right? With mm. all yeah. the bills, yeah. they will tell you the, the, the state the, stage, the bill yes, is. Yeah, mm. fine. So the, when people are following those cases, they will know, okay, the relevant mm. authorities or committees or individuals have mm. done what they're supposed to do. Mm. So if you've done those investigations and you've given the file to the Minister of Justice, mm. so when we are asking question, yeah. we would redirect the question to the Minister of Justice of as to why sure. the case is not proceeding. But if not, we're going, going back and forth with the police, mm. and they will just be holding um, all um, in, in, in this cloudy space that mm. is not really necessary. Mm. So I think, for me, that was mm. the... Uh, and we also need to talk about the diagonal accountability mm -hmm. part, right? Where we have civil society and sort of the oversight bodies, Body, yeah, go whole government as the executive accountable, yeah. and then also the elected officials also mm. are accountable to yeah. the people. So we also need to talk about... Um, the, the 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 relationship between civil society and government mm -hmm. um, in in you know um, activating an investigation on corruption cases because we've seen mm -hmm. how journalists initiated investigation of corruption sure. cases sure. government yeah. pick it up yeah. trial and prosecute mm -hmm. which was a fantastic yeah. Yeah. outcome mm -hmm. and I guess uh, more could be done mm -hmm. in terms of uh, collaboration because there are certain things that you journalists are privy to mm -hmm. right when you actually pick that up it could be a lead. To the police mm -hmm. to further investigate okay. cases. Okay. So I think this was the issues that we discussed. But most importantly, the issue of the anti-corruption was a hot topic mm -hmm. um, in this in this conversation. And now uh, we also seen the deputy speaker actually, in fact, uh, proposing to to initially proposing to delete anywhere mm -hmm. there is undue advantage okay, yeah, and the. Right excuse that he used was culture. And I said to myself, oh, <laughs> culture <laughs> is against undue advantage. Really? What is he talking about? Yeah, okay. So um, I, I, I really don't know yeah, what is yeah. happening. I guess, um, well, I think it doesn't take a high school student to get to know what is going on. Well, this is it. But I mean, in terms of the, I mean, whenever I look at or attend these things, in fact, in England, I stopped attending them because, you know, government officials or public officials will come and they talk and nothing concrete would come from it. When this concluded, did you get the sense that they had taken on board the criticisms and said, okay, now we're going to put in place the mechanism to change this culture that we're talking about where we hold on to information, uh, we don't reveal where information. I mean, what did they say at the end of the day that, okay, we hold our hands up, we've been negligent from now, mm. we will start. At the, did they give such a commitment? Well, um, right now, the opportunity that we have is to engage them. But um, I, I, for me, though, I think for the past five years, we've been, even this year, we've been consistently working, engaging members, the fifth legislature, the, the sixth legislature, mm. and engage the Minister of Justice. The Minister of Justice in July, I guess, explained mm. in, our, in, in an event that we organized, mm. explained all the contentious clauses, and there was clarity mm -hmm. um, in mm -hmm. all of those clauses. But the excuse that keep coming is mm. culture. The government is not going to legislate a law that is against our norms and values. So if you talk about illicit enrichment and then un unexplained wealth, mm -hmm. you cannot have someone <laughs> who's going to see the wealth rain from yeah, the sky. Yeah, 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 quite. And no I, one can I, do anything about it. I heard that debate, and I'm thinking, uh, this is insane. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and then we you also said... We are to be civil servants, really. Yeah, yeah. Well, so, yeah. Um, For me, I said that next parliamentary election, I am... You're, you're really going to be what? Uh, ah, you're Mr. going to stand? Adi. Really? This but national... But, but you know that women women don't get elected much in this I country. I've got to enjoy... We one of the worst, that narrative. One of really? the worst uh, in, in, in Africa, never yeah. mind in our sub-region, for, for women's representation. Yeah. Yeah. So, so don't think you're going to get elected, sorry. She will get elected. <laughs> I <laughs> will, I will. <laughs> QTV will back me and the Q group. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but back to you, Matt. Yeah, yeah. sorry. We, yeah, we I um, yeah, so those, those are some of the things that the excuses that they've been given. I just sure. believe it's a political excuse because, mm -hmm. um, you know, even if you talk about undue advantage, mm -hmm. in our culture, mm -hmm. if I go to Julia's wedding or naming ceremony mm -hmm. and I give her something conditionally, right, um, because of, she knows it's conditional, she's actually going to bring it back because yeah. if I give you something and say, look, I'm giving you this, but you need to give yeah, me a contract. Yeah, something, yeah, and yeah, if Julia is sincere, she will say, I would prefer you give me an unconditional gift. Mm -hmm. So the anti corruption bill is saying, if you are, let's say, for example, a decision maker mm. and you have a ceremony, mm -hmm. someone else comes, a, a bidder 
or someone that has interest in government businesses mm -hmm. comes to you and they give you a huge gift with an expectation that mm -hmm. um, this is you're going to actually return back favor. So what the bill is saying, if they are investigating that particular issue, sure. right, and that issue of the gift yes. flags up, up yeah. they will actually investigate That's that right. particular gift. That's so, right. um, you know, I, I believe really um, the government did tremendously well because this anti corruption bill, we actually engage Transparency International, they engage A4ID mm -hmm. um, and the pro bono legal firm in yeah. UK. They look mm -hmm. at the bill, yeah. you know, for us, and they provided recommendations, and they said the bill is actually a very yes, yeah, good yeah, bill, yeah, yeah, compatible with the UNCAC, New York National Convention Against Corruption, the yeah. AUC, PCC, the ECOS protocol on the fight against pro, uh, corruption, mm. and so many other protocols that Gambia has actually ratified. There were just some weaknesses. Mm -hmm. the, one of the weaknesses was the appointment of the commission. Co yeah, and the FPAC did yeah. a good job by ensuring that the appointment of those commissioners mm -hmm. is going to be subject to parliamentary no, no, no. Approval, approval, which was good. Yeah. The other contentious clause was the issue of um, prosecution. Yes, yeah. 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 Exactly. prosecution. Yeah, and the FPAC also did a yeah. good job exactly. by ensuring that the commission can actually initiate prosecution sure. without the consent of, of the Attorney the General. Attorney General. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Attorney General is the Minister of Justice. I mean, the Section 85 of the Constitution yeah. that they were actually, um, you know, the Minister was actually, uh, you know, referencing, I guess that does not apply to the anti-corruption commission mm -hmm. because i'm um, not a legal analyst but from consultation that we have with legal experts mm -hmm. um they said that does not actually give the minister of justice the mm -hmm. exclusive power mm -hmm. no, right. to give consent yeah. mm -hmm. to all cases that is to be prosecuted sure. especially the, in this case it was referring to the dpp the director of public prosecution right. yeah. mm -hmm. so and then the bill also said the anti I guess section um, six or seven it says mm -hmm. the anti corruption commission shall not be subject to the control of any individual yeah. or authority. Yeah. So that's yeah. particular section seven. It says controversy. It, 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 it conflicts with so exactly. With, so yeah. um, and yeah. I think the FPA did a great job. So yeah. now mm -hmm. the minority leader that was I mean it was due for that reading, it could have mm -hmm. been passed. Yeah, yeah. So the minority leader and which we also agree with mm -hmm. um, made a proposal, a motion, mm. to reconsider that particular section. Yeah, yes, because you remember yeah. what happened with the house here in Niger, yeah. mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. They have this anti-corruption commission mm -hmm. and it was like the, the journalist flag mm -hmm. called a toothless bulldog, yeah, yeah, right? It, it was so weakened and the same thing happens with Senegal. Yeah, Nigeria is suffering with coordination between the EFCC and then the other one that was established mm -hmm. in 2000. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we don't want to go back to those experiences. If you have to legislate something, let it be something um, progressive. So I guess mm. good part number of parliamentarians, honestly, good number of them did a very good job on this debate. It's just um, less than 2% yeah, yeah, of the, and we know them. So <laughs> when we talk about vertical accountability 2020, what? Is it 2027? 2027. The elections is coming. So yeah. and you know what, what happened with this? Yeah turn around of well, parliamentarians. Yeah. So which means the yeah, yeah, quite, are really... Um, there will be a new, new, new batch of uh, that, that job should really start now, really, for people well, to if know we're serious about what is happening it. and yeah. some of these very yeah. bad parliamentarians. Call, yeah. I call them very bad because they don't it's want anything progressive. They always want to go backward. So for me, really, I'll be in the forefront to advocate. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I, you know, I blame, I blame the citizens yeah. because people don't pay enough attention to what's happening at the National Assembly, mm -hmm. and they don't care how the uh, National Assembly member performs mm -hmm. uh, until that person comes around saying, his "Vote for me once again," or mm -hmm. you know, "Vote for me for the first time." Uh, yeah. I was shocked when we interviewed some of the people who were going to contest. And we asked them the simplest question you could possibly ask, why should people vote for you? <laughs> they couldn't even answer that <laughs> question. <laughs> so I was like, why yeah. would I vote for this person? And you know the funny thing is, yeah. um, <laughs> just to ask a quick question, yeah. um, you remember why the constitution was actually thrown out? Because of this issue of retroactivity clause. Yeah, of course. Yeah, you remember? Yeah, of course. Yeah, they they amazing, all then. say the law should not be retroactive. Yeah, retroactive yeah, you understand? Yeah. So now the same controversy is happening with the anti-corruption yeah, 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 yeah. bill, yeah. Yeah. right? Um, yeah. Saying, okay, this will not investigate. So meaning, yeah. if someone else stole millions of dollars from our state coffers. Okay. You're telling the commission you have no that business, business with that. going back and, and investigating. Interesting. Which is, which is Interesting yeah. Yeah. So thank you very much, Matt. So what's the way forward now? Are you thinking of um, inviting National Assembly members to, you know, make them understand, you know, the, some of the risk factors? I guess we, we've done that <laughs> yeah. enough. We yeah. did it in 2019, we did Quite. it in 2020. <laughs> we did so many activities with mm. parliamentarians, but obviously sometimes politics eclipses um, the interests. Politicians 
especially some parliamentary, a clear mm. to national interest. Yeah. They just look at protecting themselves and some of their um, foes that are actually might be implicated in this. So I think for me now, right, I, even though the National Assembly actually have been prioritizing this bill. Mm. They, remember the reason why the bill was also um, recently uh, not moving forward was when the Minister of Justice was not coming that, when he was right, invited. To invited to so come. they yeah, had quite. to suspend yeah, all quite. business related to yeah. him. Quite. It also includes the anti So if I think now, um, it is, I think it is for the people, right, to now follow the, the, the sessions on this particular yeah. question. I keep saying this is yes. the most important bill that we yes. have ever received in, during this transition because yeah. it is saying that we should protect our national wealth, which is limited, mm -hmm. safeguard it, and, then, and so it goes to the right hands. Right now, we are talking about the state-owned enterprises, mm -hmm. and we've seen reports of how mm -hmm. they've actually been mismanaging, yeah. and then you are telling the commission not to investigate, investigate that. that. So I think, for me, uh, let the citizens uh, we, we've seen what they have done in 2022. Mm. Uh, let them continue following the sessions and hold their leaders accountable yeah. because um, the, 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 the continuity of those parliamentarians in parliament depends on the votes of their people. So I am now calling on the people mm. to follow the sessions yeah. and then see what happened. I mean, also the records are there mm. from 2022 20, um, when they came until now. The all the sessions that we have in the AC bill is there. So I mm. guess now, we will continue to engage parliamentarians mm. individually or in group um, and make s hopefully they do what is right. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was mm. Mad Yang, Executive Director of Gambia Participates. Thank you. And uh, we will now go for a short commercial break. When we return, we have K. Mo Janka, Principal Trade Economist, to talk to us about the uh, um, recently handing over of equipment to um, C Trade Hub members. And we'll be right back. The art of juggling is a true spectacle of agility, coordination, and speed. A symbol of progression, precision, and mastery. is like having the juggler in your pocket with lightning fast download and upload speeds you'll easily be able to juggle even the busiest work days whether you're a busy entrepreneur a creative or just someone who wants to stay connected juggle your tasks with ease with qcell 5g speed the future is here it's fast reliable and efficient. First brought to you by QCell. We innovate, others follow. The future is now. With QCell's 5G network, experience speeds like never before. With our new 5G Rocket Fix internet plan, get speeds from 10 Mbps to 100 Mbps. Your 5G enabled devices. Walk into QCell headquarters to get one of our 5G routers and experience the true feeling of 5G only with QCell. QCell brings you the future. Tech, innovation, incredible speed. The future is now. For more information, call our customer care on 111. QCell, soon you bus. We innovate, others follow. Terms and conditions apply. QCell brings you the future with our ultimate bundles. Enjoy the best voice and data bundle plans in one package. Get unlimited data packages with flexible validity and enjoy what true internet feels like. Get 30 minutes of on-net and off-net calls with 5 gigabytes of data for just $350. Or get bigger bundle packages from 10 gigabytes to 20 gigabytes with over 100 on-net and off-net voice calls and enjoy the fastest internet speed in the Gambia. You can also buy one-day, three-day or even seven-day packages and enjoy unlimited data bundles with uncapped speeds. Just dial star 343 hash today and experience the limitless capabilities of the QCell network. Star 343 hash should be your favorite code to dial now. For more information, call our customer care on 111. QCell. We innovate, others follow. Step into the Espas Motors showroom for your luxurious name brand vehicle. Located along the Bertil Harding Highway, Espas Motors is the Gambia's authorized dealer for Chevy, Kia, Ford, 
And now we bring you the new Peugeot model 3008 SUV. 18 inch alloy wheels, 216 inches high ground clearance, keyless entry system, start and stop button, rear parking assistance system, reverse camera, adaptive cruise control with speed limit, LED daytime running lights, front and side airbags, 8 inch HD touchscreen. Not to forget our exquisite Peugeot Landtrek double cabin pickup with 2.1 litre diesel engine, 6 speed manual transmission 4x4, hill descent control, LED daytime running lights, Espas Motors, the authorized dealer for Peugeot. Visit us today or call us on 35 22 or 353 4444. now come to the tail end of the program like but they will always say <laughs> <laughs> so i have with me in the studio kemo janka uh, principal trade economist and kutubo jaju who's also an economist to talk to us about uh, the equipment that was handed to the sheet trade hub members uh, to help boost their businesses good morning gentlemen good morning good morning, good morning. and welcome to the program thank, thank you. you good to be here okay. So if you could, if we could start with you, Kemal, you're from the ministry. Uh, what was the thinking behind uh, the donation of this equipment and what do we hope to achieve by it, for those who don't know? Thank you so much. Uh, good morning once again. Uh, the launching or the handing over of the equipment is very important. Mm -hmm. But let me just go back mm -hmm. a bit to understand so that we can understand how the initiative sure. you know come about mm -hmm. uh, C-Trade is a project you know it started 2019 to 2021 mm -hmm. we are closely working with uh, International Trade uh, Center mm -hmm. and we have <coughs> almost four uh, donors for the project mm -hmm. they are uh, ITC uh, EIF that is enhanced integrated uh, framework you have OPEC and also government of the Gambia so these three donors for the project we are we are working with uh, women in business mm -hmm. in two different sector mm -hmm. the first sector is horticulture, horticulture and the second sector is fashion mm -hmm. uh, we have we, ha we, we train in them in different areas, mm -hmm. capacity buildings. Mm -hmm. Because when you look at the ecosystem, a business ecosystem in the Gambia, you find out that there are a series of gaps. Uh, one of those gaps is that you know, they need to have more skills mm -hmm. so that you know, they can push their business forward. Sure. So the project you know, is here you know, to address some of those uh, issues. So we train them different training, bookkeeping training, how to right. you know, take stock of their transaction. Mm -hmm. Because we did a study, the study shows that you know, most of them, they did not take stock of their yeah. transaction. Okay. So which is a key in a business. Of you know, I mean, I cannot come to <laughs> you <laughs> at the end of the day. <laughs> I mean, you, know, you, know, you are not able to tell me, yeah. this is my inflow, this is my yeah, outflow. Yeah, so it's going to be very difficult. Yeah. So an other element is that we train them how to digital training to okay. also, okay. you know, so that they can market their, mm -hmm. you know, uh, products. Online, okay? so well. Online you yeah. know, yeah. different social media, <coughs> yeah. you know. So with that, you know, they tend to improve mm -hmm. in different areas. Coaching is there right. and also packaging is there. Mm -hmm. But my brother will talk about the areas to to <laughs> 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 yeah. concerning yeah. about maybe fashion. Sure, yeah, sure. so that, you know, I'm not going to take talk sure. <laughs> everything. Okay, anyway. sure, sure. okay. so w with that, uh, during the project life uh, span, mm. uh, we also have a window called, you know, a grant. Right. We supported C uh, trade members. Mm -hmm. We are working with only our members. We okay. supported our right. members, okay? okay. Mm -hmm. And in these two, you know, sectors. Mm -hmm. uh, during that process, we also have a window, uh, grant window. Right. So this grant window, a maximum of two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Okay. You know, and it's a process. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to advertise to members so that member ca members can apply. And so, when members quickly ask how many members 
across the whole shield trend? Right now? Yes. Yeah, we have 136 members. 136, yes. Okay, yes, including, sorry. you know, we also add public procurement mm -hmm. and also uh, value chain enablers. Okay. Yes. So how, how can one become a, a member of the shield trade? How is it done? Okay, <laughs> remember, it, mm. okay, it, it, uh, what we normally do is that we normally open it. Mm -hmm. Okay, we call for interest. Right. So we will just, you know, open it and maybe we advertise on uh, papers, mm -hmm. online, and also newspapers too also. And QTV, we hope. <laughs> okay. You should so advertise <laughs> with us. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, on a series. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So when, when you do that, mm -hmm. and then we we'll receive, uh, you know, applications from yeah. interested, you know, mm -hmm. entrepreneurs, sure. then when they, when we, when we, um, receive them, mm. we have to do shortlisting. Mm. Because, because of C3, mm. I mean, uh, majority of uh, SMEs or entrepreneurs, mm. they are in informal sector. Right, yeah, yeah, of course. No, because of that, they are now migrating mm. from informal sector to informal, informal sector. Sure. Because we are not going to, you will not be part of C3 if you are not formalized. Yeah, yeah, of course. It right? Is, it would One, work. you have to register. Yeah, it should sure. be a registered company. Sure. Two, mm. you should produce a TIN certificate. Okay. Three, you should pay your tax clearance, you know, for the, to the government, yeah. so that, you know, government can also take care of, you know, its expenses and all that stuff. So, so in, in a nutshell, yeah. are you saying that the, um, to be part of the sheet trade, yes. you have to have an established business? Yes, okay. established in a sense that... It's not for status? Yes, it's for startups also. But okay. if you are a startups... Okay, y but you have to be in a formal setting. Yeah. Oh. Okay, like for example, if you're a startup, mm. you don't have anything, mm. right? You don't have, you don't, you don't register your business, mm. you don't have things certificate, you know, you are just like that. You said you want to apply. When you submit your application, because you should, the application should be backed by supporting documents, yeah, right? right? Yeah. So if we don't see those supporting documents, obviously you will be disqualified. Yeah, sure. Right? Mm. So, startups, if you're a startup, mm. then you can also move towards to register your business to be in a formal setting. Oh, okay. Okay. Right. Oh, yes. So, Kurubu, let's not leave you out of this. <laughs> 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 so, what's your involvement <laughs> with, with this whole project and, and how do you come in? I, I know Kemo said when it comes to fashion, you will talk about it, but yeah. I think it, it's broader than that. Yeah, and yeah. I just wondered if you could just tell us your own involvement. Yeah. Thank you so much uh, for having us here. Uh, one thing that I want to press on is with regards to how you get into sheet trades. Mm -hmm. That is, we have cohorts. We have first cohort, second cohort. Now we have fourth cohort. Mm -hmm. So usually when we have cohorts, we will open for applications, people will apply. And every cohort we have a target. Mm -hmm. We have value chain enablers because during the COVID-19, mm -hmm. because we've seen that there was a gap mm -hmm. linking buyers and sellers. Okay. So we recruited value chain enablers to connect those people. So it is demand driven mm -hmm. and economic driven. Mm -hmm. So if there is a particular gap that we've identified, we can recruit a cohort to assist us. But basically, she trades, we are not saying he trades, she trades, mm -hmm. it's women economic Which I like. empowerment. <laughs> yeah, it's 100% women economic empowerment. But it doesn't mean that it has to be only women. You can partner with a woman, right. but right. if a woman owns 30% of your business, mm -hmm. meaning that woman that business is qualified to be a sheet trade. Yeah. So you can be in a partnership with, like, let's say, yes. uh, with women. Yeah. And even you have women in the top brass of your business, like the chief executive officer of your business mm -hmm. is a woman. Mm -hmm. She is qualified oh, to be part of sheet trade. Okay. Okay. So the whole initiative is to boost women economic participation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what we do, we do capacity building because we observe that the products, we want to penetrate international market. and in in order for you to penetrate international market, you need to have the standards, the quality, the packaging, and your finishing should be a good finishing. Mm -hmm. So these are some of the things that we help entrepreneurs by providing them training and also uh, linking them to market. We sponsor them to participate in international trade fairs, domestic trade fairs, and before those trade fairs, there are pre-trade fair trainings and processes that we do to ensure that they stand out, mm -hmm. to network with uh, uh, people uh, outside of the country in order to expand their business. Mm -hmm. So our this grant initiative mm -hmm. is to boost the productive sector of the economy. Mm -hmm. Now when you look at the productive sector of every economy, it's the engine. Mm -hmm. Because your productive sector will determine your forex 
when it comes to exports and stuff like that. So boosting your productive sector will create employment, will help you a lot. So what we do, because we've seen that we've conducted a lot of trainings. Mm. So that is PowerPoint presentation. This is what you need to do, but the tools are not there. Mm. So we feel like we need to provide these tools. So our grant was 100% tools. Okay. So okay. some of the entrepreneurs will tell me that, Kutubu, I need, I need material. I said, no, mm -hmm. this time mm -hmm. you just buy machines. Mm -hmm. yeah, Let us course. buy machines yeah. this time in order to boost your business. So mm -hmm. that's my... So, so the last time, uh, yeah, sorry, Karen. Mm -hmm. No, I was going to say the last time mm -hmm. um, you talked about it was 21 who got equipment. Yeah. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah? 35. 35, yeah. okay. So my, my things is wrong yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's 21, 20 members. 21 in fashion sector ah. and 14 in, in, the in horticulture sector. Ah, yeah. okay, right. So right, your okay. data is yeah. not very yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. You know, for the, 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 the handing over ceremony, mm -hmm. you know, we separate it. Mm -hmm. The first handing over was done, I think, two weeks ago, mm -hmm. if my memory can serve me well. Sure. Uh, in that, we have, you know, s uh, almost uh, 16 mm. in fashion okay. that submitted yes. their equipment to the ministry for the handing over ceremony. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And six of them are in, uh, are in horticulture, right, right. okay? Yeah. But in uh, the total, total number of beneficiaries, the yeah. C trade beneficiary is 35. Five, yeah, okay. right? mm -hmm. So we are planning to do uh, the last handing over mm -hmm. that is scheduled for next week, Monday right. at 12. Okay. So you'll be solely informed about it. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so we are making that arrangement. Okay. So all in all is 35, 21 is in uh, fashion, right. and 14 in. So the, w the event we attended, <coughs> was it 21 in fashion or, or was it some fashion and some? Yes, some fashion and some, some horticulture. horticulture, yes. Okay, right, yes. Okay. Majority of the beneficiary for yes. the first handing over, yes. we are in okay, fashion. Right. I think that's so where the, the figure the second um, handing over, how many beneficiaries are we expecting? Yeah, uh, that is, uh, for the first, we, we have 16 and 6, that mm. is uh, 22. 22. Mm -hmm. 22 from 35, we have uh, 13. Yeah. Okay. Yes, so um, 13. This, this equipment that mm -hmm. you present to these members, yes. um, do you ask them their needs? Like, how is it done? <laughs> do you just get up and say, like, we always do donations, you just donate stuff to hospitals <laughs> and without asking them their yeah. needs? Or do you get to ask them what they really want? <laughs> <laughs> can, can, can I? Yes, yes, go ahead. I think, I think this is a very interesting <laughs> yeah, question, yeah. and I think we've learned lessons from different projects. When we got these funds for these entrepreneurs, uh, what, uh, we form a committee, because you know government, we have a process, we form a committee, and the committee received the application, review the applications, and once they were like approved, mm -hmm. we did a side visit to verify where the, what you put on the paper mm -hmm. is the reality on the ground. So we went for side visit, we visited all these business. It was a painstaking activity. <laughs> so we, 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 we visited all of them, verify every information, and we score them. From there, we have an approved list. So that approved list, we communicate to them. We invite them to a meeting at the ministry. We told them that we are not going to the market to buy this equipment to you, because this is not our first experience. Mm. Because once you buy equipment for uh, entrepreneurs, they will tell you that, no, they buy this one for me, I don't want this, is mm. not good for my business, mm. no, no, no. is even reducing the quality of my products mm. and stuff like that. Mm. We told them that you will be involved 100%. Mm. Well, we will not leave you, we will do it together. Mm. That is, go and identify the product, that the, the, the equipment that right. you want, yeah the supplier because at the end of the day this equipment has to go through maintenances and stuff yeah, like that yeah, so yeah, you yeah. need to have someone that you trust, trust yeah. so they went identify from there mm -hmm. they sent us the specifications and the price from there we verify mm -hmm. because we don't want them mm -hmm. to inflate the prices yeah, okay. we verify and some of the committee members even know the prices. If you tell them a particular equipment, like let's say for example sewing machine, sewing simple machine. sewing machine, yeah. everyone in the government knows that it's around fifteen to sixteen thousand. Mm -hmm. So automatically, if you tell us the price, we will know exactly this okay. is the price. Mm -hmm. And one thing that stands out, 
uh, there we encourage them to source everything domestically mm. because we had experience we bought uh, equipment for someone from a country outside of the Gambia let me not mention <laughs> names <laughs> but at the end of the day when we bring the machines to the Gambia here we had to bring someone from that country to come and fix that, yeah. that, that, that machine. So from that experience, we encourage. We do mm. not force them. We mm. encourage them to source domestically and also let them have warranty yeah. on those yeah. equipment. So it's, uh, they were involved and we did, not, we did not buy it, but we guide them. And we ensure that we sign an agreement with them because we've seen that uh, like if you give money to entrepreneurs, they mm. might use it for other purposes. Of course. So they've signed an agreement <laughs> that they will buy a particular equipment <laughs> that uh, aligns with the specification mm -hmm. and that equipment will stay for a particular period of time without mm -hmm. selling it mm -hmm. because you, you, you can never tell. So mm -hmm. they all signed that agreement. So we did our homework. Thank you. Okay, yeah. thank, yeah. thank, yes. thank you. Finally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just to add what he said, mm -hmm. um, the, the support, the C3 support, mm -hmm. you know, is a grant from uh, EIF, that's Enhanced Integrated uh, Framework. Mm -hmm. The amount is fifty thousand uh, dollars, and when you look at the needs mm -hmm. of the entrepreneurs, is so vague. Yeah. I mean, we cannot cater all. So what we did as a committee, because what he said, you know, different institutions, you know, constitute the committee. Uh, what we did is that after submission, uh, their needs. Uh, what we did is that we have to list it based on their priority. We have to call them. It's not an easy job, actually. Mm -hmm. We have to call them. Almost uh, 30, uh, 35 of them, we have to call them. Some, sometimes we will call them, we will not get them. Mm -hmm. So we have to follow up. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we follow up with them, so we reduce some of their items because of the envelope. Mm -hmm. So based on their priority, mm -hmm. we, go, we, we, we went ahead with the, 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 the buying of those you know, equipment. Mm -hmm. So actually, I mean, they are happy, yes, mm -hmm. but they need more support. <laughs> yeah. So we will not re relent our efforts. Okay. We'll work with stakeholders mm -hmm. to ensure that we have more, you know, bigger envelopes so that for some for of these issues can be Thank addressed. You Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, yes. Thank you uh, Kutubu, Kutubu yes. for coming on the program study. It's a pleasure having both of you, and uh, I've learned a lot. So uh, thank you, and uh, keep up that good work. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you thank so much. Viewers, thank that's you. all we have. But before I go, Mange wish Nyep happy Gamo. Yala Nkofeke Atyubari. Yala Nangusu Nyani. Musa Nyusi Bakar. Wa Globi. Na Kukubuga Amjai Chara Wall Market. Nyom Nyom Mande. Solal. Yes, yes. We are not, we are not here tomorrow. So, uh, Globi is proudly sponsored by Njai Chara Wall Market. Uh, Form Muntine Karek. So, Bugie Melni. Ele Gamo la. So, so bugie mel ni rek, dem al visit ya chara wall market at Sarekunda. You can contact him at 5910785, 5910785. gamo la, so for new yiwal. So, so bugie yiwal, ya chara rek, mola muna yiwal ye ni, mashallah. So, mange wish nyep happy gamo. Dilen wah nenak, um, eleg dunchu muna neka for this morning program, because eleg public holiday le. So, dunchu muna neka, um, eleg wai nak. So, bugie mel ni, bulen gamo be, bulen koda fit al visit in ya chara wall market. Um, you can visit him there. Mugi ami amazing team. Omar Agnip Nyungfa. Um, until we come your way next week for another edition of this morning program. Bye bye and do enjoy the rest of our program. <laughs>